Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and give this video a like. Yep, podcast below in the description. Please go check that out and subscribe to that as well. Video brought to you by wineaccess.com slash ham, 20% off. Yep. Order yourself a bottle of wine. Send it to a friend. Send it to a loved one. Wineaccess.com slash ham, 20% off. It's expensive bottles, cheap bottles. They got it all, guy. Inexpensive, John, because satisfaction is guaranteed. Oh. All right, what do we think of the way uh, Jimmy Garoppolo handled? I go. I got to go back and count it up. It, it, when I read the transcript yesterday, I think it was at least six straight questions about um, Trey Lance. Uh, yeah, it was several questions in a row about Trey Lance. I, I, you know, you and I talk about this a lot. Price of admission is acting like a professional. You don't get extra points for acting like a professional. But um, I thought he handled it as well as he could have handled it. I, I was impressed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we've seen w- one reason you never know is because we've seen every end of the spectrum. For every guy that acts like Alex Smith, a couple years ago, Roethlisberger was a pretty big dick. Now, it turns out n- none of the guys could play. So it's like, should we really be mad about Roethlisberger not embracing Mason Rudolph? Mm-mm. But I, I just think you want more. You know, I bet if you ask Mike Tomlin, Kevin Colbert, like, you know, Ben, we're paying you $30 million. You're the franchise guy just can you just be friendly to people like this shouldn't be that difficult rogers love i mean rogers is acting like he likes jordan love but the reason he's mad at gudikins is because there was no communication well is there no communication over them drafting a quarterback so it's like yeah you like the guy but you're mad ultimately because the guy's there now rogers and roethlisberger are in a different universe than jimmy right i mean they've been all pros pro bowls obviously rogers is better than roethlisberger but they're elite players you know, Roethlisberger's not anymore, but he has pelts on the wall. So Jimmy had less equity to even begin to act like that. But I, I actually thought he was just very – one thing you don't get often anymore in these press conferences is authenticity w- with quarterbacks. I think sometimes you get it a lot more with, like, position players. They, they don't have as much to, like, gain or lose. They just kind of tell you how they feel. But with quarterbacks, it's just – and I don't blame them. Everything they say, if you're a – what would you say, like – basically any starting quarterback, but there's like 15 guys. If they say something, it's just, you know, it's a needle mover. I think you see it with star NBA players and they get very, very cautious over what they say. And I thought Jimmy was just authentic. Like, yeah, you know, I was a little taken back, right? I was a little, I don't know if he rat, rattled as he didn't say, but it was just, he needed to take like a moment. Right. Yeah. And then, and then he realized like, what kind of guy do I want to be? And I'm not going to pretend we're just best friends off the jump, but there's a relationship. It takes time. Like, I, what am I supposed to say? Yeah, we're best friends. Or, you know, we've already hung out. I like the guy. He seems cool. It's going well. You can't force these things. I remember Alex and the Chiefs talking about the same thing. Like, we're not expecting him to just hold his hand every day and take him to dinner and be his BFF. But, like, if you're, you have a true high character guy, there is an expectation of being a pro. And I, I, I was... Not that I wasn't expecting him to be quote unquote impressive or say the right things, yeah. but I, I don't think he could have said it any better just about the way like this takes time, but I got his back. I understand. I'm here. Like we, I think I that's get. well said. I didn't expect him to be anything but classy about it. I don't think I necessarily expected him to so many times articulate different thoughts when kind of asked generally about Trey in the same way. And he continued to go back to it. And I thought was, you're right, very thoughtful. Um, you know, Florio wrote, Today, Jimmy hinted at requesting a trade. I didn't read that into what he said. I don't know if you read it that far. I thought that was a stretch. Um, you know, I, I don't. They've been trying to. The rumor was they were they'd considered trading him. So, or, you know, had had at least investigated trading him. So he wouldn't have. Well, had of to, course, guy. They just traded to, three first round picks for a quarterback. He wouldn't have had to request it. Like you know. Um, well, he he did control it because he has no trade clause, right? I know, but it, if he had been able to, now you you could argue if you're him, requesting a trade, isn't you might if you can beat like part of it's like if I can just beat this guy out and to start a year, you could argue he should feel like he should, right? Um, then he's in a pretty good spot to succeed. You come off looking like a good guy. You're on a good team. You know the system. You're healthy. If you keep Trey Lance on the bench. You get a lot of credit for that. You increase your value. You know, in some ways, you could argue this is the best spot for him to be in terms of elevating his value. And it sounds like he understands that. Like one thing he said, I want to go back to one of his quotes, uh, and I, uh, 
Lombardi, David Lombardi wrote this in The Athletic, highlighted it. Um, this is one thing he said, trying to keep the muscles pliable and staying hydrated. All that stuff applies. He's talking about his ankles. Um, but I really think it's just fun getting the fundamentals down and playing within the offense. When I play within the offense, things are good and things go well and I stay healthy. So that's a big part of the offseason. Part, in other words, I'm taking that care David of Lombardi or Jimmy Garoppolo. You seen David Lombardi? I mean, dude's got like 5% body fat. <laughs> <laughs> the, the part of what he's saying is like, I just, I got to take care of me. When I play within the offense, I can play well and I stay healthy. And that might be enough to beat out Trey Lance this year. Right. Yeah. Jimmy has a lot on the line because if I went back to my Roethlisberger point, like Ben wasn't going to have some swan song for the Browns, right? He, he he didn't have any desire to go play for the Texans, right? Or the Dolphins. Like Ben's perfectly fine retiring as a Steeler. Like that's his turf. Why would he want to leave? There is probably a moment where if you're Jimmy, you take a deep breath and you start kind of land, like checking out the landscape of everything and going, is my best chance to resurrect my career and get, I don't know, another big contract here? Look at, because if I was Don Yee, I'd go, Look at what happened to Alex. They they drafted a guy, and he had been a starter for a, more years than you, acted the right way, treated him the right way. The organization was – it felt like they were being over the top, but I think I just know internally they believe like the way he acted. And Mahomes has talked about it. He was then – I'll never forget the day that he was traded for Washington and they gave him an extension. People were like, how much did they just give him? That Why couldn't that happen to Jimmy? Jimmy's traded to Team X – Next offseason, after having a career year, treating Trey and being buddies with him and just all these good reports all year long that are real, there's substance behind it. And then Jimmy's traded, you know, for two twos, and that team extends him $70 million guaranteed. And people are like, oh, my God. Like, we see it all the time with quarterbacks. All the free – Teddy Bridgewater two years ago got three years and $60 million. Now, I think only 30 of them were guaranteed, but still, like, you can – Jimmy is already a valuable asset if he's on the field more than like 70% of quarterbacks. The question is, is can he stay on the field? And then if you can factor in, God, he's just, he learned from Tom. He acts the right way. Like, I think he kind of brings a lot to the table for, you know, what coaches truly like, yeah. right? Yeah. He brings a lot to the table for a team that just drafted a quarterback third overall too. If he's going to well, act yeah, like that. Right. But I, I think probably once he realized the Patriots, Probably wanted him to take a pay cut. Like they were never, he was never going to go there being injured and make $20 million. That's not the way Bill operates. So he's like, well, I don't want to take a pay cut to be here. And the team might be better the here. The receivers are better. Tight and then ends. once they draft Mac Jones and that goes away, I'm all in. Like yeah. I'll just be the quarterback totally. here and I'll win. Yep. Now, you know, depending on how he plays, he could, I don't, he's not thinking this way, but he's not guaranteed to be the starter, right? <laughs> Which so, could just change his career a little bit. That I'm going to play this now. This is kind of tongue-in-cheek. I just wanted my thought when I saw this video. So yesterday, um, our old buddy Casey Pratt over at uh, uh, let me, ABC, ABC 7, 7. In the Bay Area. Yep. Yeah. Um, he, post, he reposted. I'm just looking for the – I brought it up a second ago. This video. And here's my first thought, John, was uh, are they throwing the same route? Because if they're throwing the same route, Jimmy gets rid of the ball a lot quicker. Now, Jimmy gets the snap a hair ahead of Trey, but just a hair. The ball comes out a lot quicker than the difference in time between when they got the snap. Well, maybe Trey knows that the GM and the coach aren't even paying attention, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just saying, Jimmy, one thing we talked about when they got Jimmy was just how tight his mechanics were. You know, I mean, look how this is – if they're throwing the same route, Chad, I'm just saying, one's a sack and one's a completion potentially. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy should be – and listen, I talk a lot of shit about practice and some of the stuff coaches get uh, just enamored with because they do – practice really matters to them. Th if that is true, they're throwing the same route. Which I don't know that this, they are. They might this not is be. stuff like coaches like make a big deal about, right? The fundamentals, the, the quickness of your feet, the drops, the pace – Jimmy should be ahead of him. I guess. Right? I mean, Grant asked Shanahan uh, if the high pass was a concern, and he was like, no. So <laughs> maybe I'm making something out of nothing. But just something I noticed. Good catch. Something I noticed. G John and Kyle just going to, you know, bullshit over there on the yeah, side? Are they, they going to coach they, and, who and are evaluate? They, who are they watching? Where'd that video go? I'm all caught up now. What are they looking at? 
I think they're probably just talking life. Do you think they're talking summer? You know, vacations? It may, or, may not be a football conversation. They're, you know, maybe like what something Robert Sala used to do and maybe D'Amico. They got, you know, is that, what would you guess, about $15 million of employee right there? 